And welcome once again to Action for Animals. Today, we're doing things a little, I don't know, differently. Well, no, not the look. But um, the fact that today, we actually have Gail in studio. Now, normally, you know, Gail is out introducing us to all sorts of wonderful people and also wonderful animals. But she's here today in the studio because a little differently, we're going to be visiting Wesley Hall School. The children there are amazing. And I've had such fun looking at them um, on the day that it was recorded. And I know that Gail and Simon both had a wonderful time. And we have two of the students, two of the students who are with us here today. And we are always showing you, you know, that owning a dog is a commitment. It's a lifetime commitment. It's a responsibility, not just a privilege. So we see that they depend on us for food for shelter and they deserve so much more so let's find out just what the children think as gail visits wesley hall school so my name is gail and i'm so happy to be here thank you so much for allowing cbc barbados to come in stone now this is really, really important what we're doing today because we're going to be talking about dog safety and dog care. Take a few photos, it? And in a minute you're going to see a really beautiful cute it, dog it? called Dora. So when she comes on the stage, I would like everybody to keep their voices videos. Alright? Because dogs hear different to us and if you make too much noise, it can make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. Alright? So we're going to do good listening and we're only going to speak when you're asked a question. Alright? So, with no further ado, I am now going to welcome Simon, Lichow and Dora to the stage. So, I'd like you to tell me if you think Dora is a purebred dog or a mixed breed dog. So, I can see this, because you're near, tell me what do you think? She's definitely a normal dog, that's for sure. She's actually a pure breed, and Simon, can you tell us what breed of dog she is? She is a French Bulldog. French Bulldogs are very known to be gentle, very friendly, and they love children. By well, show of hands, who of you has dogs at home? Right, so that's nearly the whole school, you all have dogs. We'll continue with Gail's visit to Wesley Hall School after the break. On Action for Animals, we team up with the animal advocacy group Action for Animals Barbados and we hope to enlighten, to educate you on the importance of proper care for your animals. Today, the importance of teaching animal welfare and care to our children. Let's continue with our visit. Somebody from the fourth row, teacher, 
don't sleep to three, you want to once a week, twice a week, every day. Once a week. Okay then, so you think don't drink water twice a week, but how often do you drink? You drink water every day. Okay, so talk to the same, alright? So the first thing that you need to know about having dogs is that they're very much like humans, they need to have access to water, clean water. Good morning everyone. <laughs> All right, so the first thing with nutrition, a dog should always drink water and always have fresh water every day. Feeding the dog should be chow and that kind of stuff. Y'all guys know it's chow, right? Chow is a special food made just for dogs. It has all the nutrition they need to grow big and healthy. They also need shelter, which is very, very important for dogs. They can't be stuck in the sun or the rain. So what are the three things that dogs need? Hands up. Dogs need a dog pitch and hold water actually. There's just a couple more things that I want to say that are so important. Dogs also need exercise. All dogs need exercise, okay? And all dogs, if you have a dog pen, you need to be there out of the pen every single day. Alright? You need to be able to walk about and they need to be able to run as well. So speak to mommy and daddy, you say, Mommy, we're taking the dog out. So the best time of the day to walk your dogs are going to be in the morning when it's early or in the evening when it's cool. The reason why for that is because dogs can overheat. They don't sweat like we do, all right? They get something called heat stroke. Also, the ground is really hot for their pads. So if you take them out during the day when the sun's up, it can really hurt their pads, okay? So always remember when really you walk them to do in the morning and the evening. They also need, what, what's this called, Simon? A leash. That's a leash. Yep. So they also need to be walked on a leash or a harness, okay? Not an old rope. This is a harness. Okay? This is the harness, and this is the leash, okay? So dogs also need to be for their safety and for your safety, all right? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to invite some of you to come up on the stage, and I'm going to how you interact with the lovely dog, okay? The most important thing, the most important thing that we're going to have to be worried about is quiet, is that I'm scared, alright? Okay then, so we're going to begin with the first row, and here's volunteer, or everybody, please, Simon. Yeah. Scared? Don't be scared. They also don't just bite. They do bite, but not her. She won't bite you. Okay, so you know Simon, you know Simon, and 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 you know Yes, you may. Under the chin. Very good, alright? So it's always important to ask the person who owns the dog if you can stroke it first. We don't just stroke people with dogs. But thank you so much for sharing your time with us. We thank Principal Giddens and all of the teachers, and we hope you have a really, really wonderful day. Thank you very much.
Today on Action for Animals, we have animal rights advocate Gail Hunt in the studio with us. And joining Gail from Wesley Hall School are Nkosi Robinson and Samuel Harry. And they're both like animal rights advocates in their own right. And we'll meet them in just a little bit. But Gail, welcome. Nice to have you inside. I know, you, you, you managed it. <laughs> yes. Now, you have taken us all around the island. We've met so many wonderful people caring for animals. And also, we've met some really wonderful animals as well, in studio and outside. Just give me a little idea of why animal advocacy is so important to you. Well, for me personally, I, I find that in order to have a healthy, you know, holistic society, we can't exclude things. So we advocate for various things in Barbados. We advocate for the rights of the elderly, the vulnerable, the children. So we have to include advocacy for animal welfare as well. That's also important. And, and of course, you have seen uh, some of the ways that animals are treated. And I know that that is a big concern for you. And what better way to prevent that than sharing that information of proper care with the young? So tell me, we saw your visit to Wesley Hall. What was that like for you personally? It was a really enjoyable experience. The children were receptive and very engaged, so that made it a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I just found having the dog with us as well, who can't be in the studio, <laughs> Simon wasn't able to bring the dog, but having the dog really helped the children to kind of not just hear about it theoretically, but they were also able to get the practical experience of seeing the dog, seeing ways to pick them up, hold them, how to approach them, things like that. Mm -hmm. So that hands-on experience that some of the children had was really important for them. Well, I thought so in some instances where the answers to the questions that you gave them, um, some were very, very informed and, and then others, you know, I think that we saw the reason why it was necessary yeah. for you to be there. So can you in introduce us to your little friends? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, next to me is Nkozi. Hi, Hi Nkozi. Nkozi. <laughs> and then at the end, we have Samuel. Hi. Welcome, Samuel. Hello. So, Hello. gentlemen, tell me a little bit. I know, Samuel, you said that you have a pet. What's your pet? My pet is a dog. Uh huh, and it has a name yes. like you were Samuel. <laughs> your dog's name, Luke. Luke. Do you know what breed Luke is? Yes, please. What is he? He is a Doberman <gasps> and a American Bull Massive Master. He's bigger than you are. He's huge. <laughs> what color is he? He is brown and black. Brown and black. That's pretty. So is he a young dog or is he an older dog? He's a some light young dog. Mm -hmm. Does he listen? Not all the time. <laughs> What's he like? He's a little bit playful, mm -hmm. but sometimes he when when he is doing something, and then then when I tries to touch him, he tries to bite me. Mm -hmm. But playfully. Yes. Yes. And how do you handle him then? I handle him like, like when any time when he comes to me, I try to make sure that he does not bite me. So that's why I try to put down his food fast enough so that he does not bite me. Right. Because sometimes when we're feeding them, they can get a little excited. And what he means to do to you in play might not necessarily seem like play um, to anyone, you know. Because some people are afraid of animals. So again, very important to get the children on board in the family, yeah. you know, when this is happening. Now, Nkosi, I understand that you do, you don't have a pet, but what made you love animals?
you don't know you just love them yeah they're cute they're cuddly you like to pet them did you pet the dog that was at your school what was her name i can't remember pardon right no okay so, I mean, I can say for Nkosi, that Nkosi lives in my area, mm -hmm. and Nkosi is an ambassador, actually, oh. and he wasn't kind of like designated to be one, uh -huh. but he is an ambassador, so he kind of like, with the children that he plays with and that, he tends to promote animal welfare naturally. Um, so you know sometimes the fowls and the chickens can be a bit annoying and a kid might want to pick up a rock and ah. cause he's the one that's going to say we don't do that and he'll explain why and I can remember once I was coming home from work and he had a box was it a, what was it a chicken or something you had some small yeah. Chicks. It was the chicks, and he was nursing them, um, and then he kind of like released them back home. Did you give them to a farm? No, actually one day, me and my mum tried our best to save it. Yeah. So he was looking me. after some chicks who didn't have a mum. Okay. Yeah. And one died. I'm sorry. But I know you met well. So what did you do with the ones who lived? No, I thought I only two so there was just one left okay what did you do with it you kept it nope what did you do with it i put it back in the world where it belongs mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i can tell that in cozy you know off set is very very chatty <laughs> yeah. but getting him out is he's rather rather shy so I understand, but Gail, has Wesley Hall been the only school that you've visited? As a charity, Action for Animals, we've done quite a lot of outreaches at schools, particularly before COVID. Um, Post-COVID, not so many. Wesley Hall has been the first. We've also met with the Ministry of Education and discussed proposals with them, along with some other charities as to how we can introduce animal welfare into schools um, not necessarily as a school curriculum though that would be really lovely as a science-based project but just to make sure that that is included as a subject matter within lessons for children i think uh, samuel said a really good point when he said about feeding the dog mm -hmm. child safety around animals is really important particularly now because as we're promoting animal welfare, oftentimes we have dogs tied up in yards right. or in boxes. So if we're going to be promoting animal welfare and wanting families to interact <laughs> with their dogs more, we have to make sure that the children know how to as well, how to read the dog's body language, you know. What's the difference between a dog that's kind of like growling in an aggressive way, barking, to get your attention or barking as a warning. All of these things are very important right. for children to understand. Okay, we're just going to take a quick break and then when we come back, I want to know about the interaction with the teachers as well because that's also very important. Yes. So we'll be back after this. Today we're taking a look at the importance of teaching our, child, our children the best way to look after our animals and we have two students of Wesley Hall with us here today and also animal rights advocate Gail Hunt. Now when you're teaching this safety information to children, how involved are the teachers? Well, they're going to be critical because if we go in and do a presentation, that's really nice. But then the teachers actually have to kind of like make it continue. <laughs> so <laughs> the teachers need to have some kind of understanding. Now, some teachers may already be pet owners and would have worked with a dog trainer and have a, a, a basic understanding of how to train a dog, how to interact. But if a teacher doesn't know, then as animal welfare charities, when we're promoting this, we have to make sure that we include the teachers as well, providing guidance for them in terms of the subject matter 
you know, mm -hmm. um, because there's so much, there's a plethora of information out there. So we want to kind of like drill down to what's relevant and important and relatable for Barbados, because what goes on in other countries might not be so applicable to us. Right. For example, we're a hot country, so we know that it's important to walk dogs in the morning or the evening when it's cool. cool. That's not going to matter in Europe. Mm -hmm. So we would teach things like that, you know, include the essentials with the mm -hmm. teachers and also bring in the animals. Another thing we'd like to do is to see teachers coming out to some of the sanctuaries with the children so that they can meet the animals firsthand, learn to kind of like interact with them, see the level of care that goes into dogs because um, mm -hmm. there's, there's such a lot that goes into the care and it's not, not just dogs peter it's kind of like livestock yes, horses all animals. all animals yeah so samuel sorry didn't mean to break up your convo <laughs> um <laughs> why is it important to be kind to animals it's important to be kind to animals because if you're not kind to animals they will charge at you because because they think that you will be a threat to them mm -hmm. and you will not like to have injuries from a dog. Quite. <laughs> what about you, Nkosi? What do you think? Mm. Your little eight-year-old heart is already going in the right direction. So why do you think it's important to be kind to animals? I think it's important to be kind to animals because you're paying them a debt. So when you need help, they'll pay a debt to you. Oh. And when you're in danger, they'll help you. I like how you're thinking. Mm -hmm. That's quite right, because they're loving you unconditionally. And so they're your protectors and looking after you. So if you look after them, they'll look after you. I like how you're thinking, how you're both thinking. This is so nice to hear. I know that we have oh my goodness, looked at bees, mm -hmm. um, we've got horses coming up, mm -hmm. and also the, those under the sea. Um, but so far, have you felt about getting the message with Action for Animals out there to the public on our weekly show? Yeah, I think it's been really kind of well received from the feedback that I've had. And what I really like is that all of the guests that have been on the show are very knowledgeable, you know, they're, they're experts in their fields and they're coming from a place of love and compassion and understanding the community and the culture in which we live in, you know, because we, we're kind of like all different diversities, all different classes in Barbados. So when you're promoting animal welfare, you have to be able to do it in a way that's relatable to everyone. You know, um, if you speak to a young person that's kind of like got a pit bull and they, I want to, I want to breed my pit bull, I want to fight my pit bull. You know, how are you going to approach them in terms of educating them onto pit bulls or family dogs as well? You've got to care for them in very, a different very way. Very, very loving, very, very loving yeah. and protective of their families, but not really to be trained to be aggressive. Exactly, so we need mm. to teach that in a way that this young person is going to understand and say, well, you know, other things that pit bulls can do, they're full of energy, they, they love agility, you know, they love pulling, you, you know, you can create your own pit bull sports that are non-aggressive. So the different persons that you're working with, you have to be able to relate to them and to communicate to them in a way. And I feel like the guests that we've had on and how they've like, communicated about their work has been in a way that from what I've heard has been very understandable across the board I'm not sure about your experience yeah quite and I've learned I've learned a lot thank you you know for those interactions that we've had so far yeah. um, my thought now that I have you here is what still needs to be done well for for all animal advocates, <laughs> the most number one thing is the enforcement of our animal welfare laws. Because if we provide the education, that's great. That means that people have an understanding of how to care for animals, where to go if the animals are ill, things like that. But we're always going to have, unfortunately, in life, not just with animal cruelty, all types of, of different abuses go on, with human abuse. So we really need for our uh, 
We have the enforcement, the legislations in place, okay, Action for Animals have actually met with government, as along with other animal welfare charities, we've talked about legislation and the enforcement, but we do need that when, when a member of the public goes to that that point, you don't get to that point unless it's serious, you know. You don't report animal abuse unless there's actual abuse going on. And we need for it to be enforced because there's a lot of persons out there that are terrorised sometimes, you know, with threats of, I'm going to poison your dog. If your dog don't stop barking, I'm going to poison it. And the dogs are poisoned and they have, they have no recourse because if they then take the bold move, and it is a bold move, to then report it to the proper authorities and it does get to the point where it gets to the the courts and things we then need the courts to be able to understand the legislation and enforce it accordingly right. it's not about throwing people into jail like mm -hmm. you know it's about saying at least there has to be some accountability you did this so therefore the legislation says the fine is 1000 you're going to have to pay at least 500 of that, be accountable. So I think the education and the enforcement, if we can put them together, we, we're going to be making strides. How close are we, do you think? Well, got quite a way to go. <laughs> <laughs> With the enforcement? With the, yeah. I think we've still got quite a way to go because of the, con the concepts in our minds about animals. Yeah. You know, the things that you value the most is what you're going to put the most energy into. So if, if we have, as a society, a low value of animals, then if somebody goes to court, um, you know, to deal with an animal cruelty case, they might say, well, it's just a dog. You know, that doesn't matter, but it actually does matter because it impacts other people. Actually, um, I'm glad you said that because immediately what came to mind for me was when I see, you know, animals who are injured on the roads, um, could it have been avoided? Was it the animal's fault? Who knows, yeah. you know, but, but it happened and I've been seeing quite a few monkeys actually yeah. um, recently, you know, and so I wonder what, what should people do when they pass and see an animal who's been injured, who's been hit by a motor vehicle or motorcycle or whatever? What should they do? Who, who, who do they call? I think the quickest, the most recognised on the animal island, there's lots of people they could call, but I just, I just think for having a generalised um, one place stop, if it's dogs, you can contact animal control and all other animals, um, the RSPCA, horses, we have the horse charity, but to make life simple, call the RSPCA, and then the RSPCA themselves can contact the relevant persons. Right, and should we approach the animal ourselves? And um, if it's a I, monkey, I would say no. I wouldn't or advise dog. it. No, because injured animals can be defensive. Exactly. And, and they, that can make them aggressive because they, they're already in pain and shock. And they're scared. Yeah. Yeah. So I have you here now, Gail, <laughs> so you can, you know, tell our um, audience what's coming up next for the few <laughs> episodes that we have left. Well, first of all, Peter, thank you so much. Your your um, technical team and everyone has been absolutely awesome. So thank you. Yeah. So coming up, we've got horses. We've got the horse charity. We've also got the coral reef persons coming oh, on. Oh yes, nice. And we've also got the green monkey, the Barbados green monkey, which. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing already because it's so divided, but we've also got people coming on to talk about the green monkeys because we do have farmers in Barbados, believe it or not, that do live in harmony. Really? Yeah, because they use... That should be an interesting one. Yeah, so we need them to explain why they live in harmony with them. Mm -hmm. And these are people that live in monkey territory. Right. Okay. So that's something to look forward to. The episodes that are coming up on Action for Animals. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Thank you, and Kosi and Samuel. I know you all, you know, took time out of school and I know you're headed back there, so get there safely. Thank you for sharing uh, with us. And thank you to all of you who will drop me messages from all over the world as you watch this very important 
uh, program here on CBC. And looking forward to that one on the coral reefs and, and the monkeys. And as you all know, horses, not so much. However, um, they're all living <laughs> beings. And we, you know, we care for them. And we care for them the best way we know how. And that's armed with knowledge, which you'll get right here on Action for Animals. Thank you.